Chapter 8, Who's Your Daddy? Aru watched a lot of movies, probably more than what was good for her. Not that she cared. According to the movies, right about now was when she should be seeing her life flash before her eyes while a bunch of people tearfully screamed, Stay with us! Don't follow the light! The arrows grew bigger the closer they got. They cut through the air and the sound they made was halfway between a wince and a whistle. A ruse gaze darted across the empty sky. Forget the rules from a movie. Should follow anyways, even a suspiciously bright light at the end of the tunnel if it meant getting out of here. But then the rain of arrows stopped short, as if it was someone had just hit pause. Don't worry, said Boo. The arrows won't actually hit until you've paid your respects to the five fathers of the Maharbahada. Aru and Minnie were crouched and huddled together. Both of them were staring up at the quivering arrows hovering just a couple of feet over their heads. Maybe it was just her imagination, but the arrows seemed really annoyed that they had to wait a bit before they got to launch themselves at Aru and Minnie. Um, great, said Aru. Dharma Raja, we acknowledge you, said Vu in a deep voice. The statue of the Dharma Dharma Raja, Lord of Justice and Death, loomed above them. He was as gray as ash, two sharp tusks curled from under his lip. In one hand he held his Donna stick, the rod used for punishing souls in the afterlife. In the other he held the noose he used to rope the souls of the dead. Abru's breath quickened as she remembered which Pandava was his son. Yudhisthira, he was the oldest Pandava brother and was known for being noble and just and wise. Aru wasn't sure she wanted Ara Raja to be her dad, being known for being the wisest and most just, way too much pressure. Pranana, Pranama hissed Boo. Minnie and Aru rushed forward and touched his feet. Lord Indra, said Boo. The statue of Indra, king of the heavens, was next. His skin was the color of a thunderstorm. In his hand, he held the weapon, Vajra, the thunderbolt. There was no way Aru could be the daughter of Indra. His Pandava, Pandava son was Arjuna, and the triumphant of all the Pandava brothers, Arjuna was the most famous. He had the most adventurous and was known for his incredible skill with the bow and arrow. If being wise and just was pressure, imagine being considered the greatest hero of the entire story. No thank you, thought Aru. Lord Vayu, huh? Thought Aru. That wouldn't be so bad. Yayu, Lord of the Wind, steered a slight breeze. He was dark skinned and looked like the handsome star of a Bollywood film. He held a spinning flag that heralded the directions. His Pandava brother was Bhima the Strong. Bhima was known for having a ridiculously large appetite, being super strong and also having a temper, all of which Aru thought she could deal with. The Ashvins, Nasa, Taya, and Dasra. Two statues with the heads of horses glowed. They were the gods of sunrise and sunset and medicine. Their Pandava sons were also twins. Nikula the beautiful and Sahardeva the wise. Definitely would not mind being known for beauty, thought Aru. She still had some misgivings about the whole wisdom thing. Minnie and Aru paid their respects to each. When the final Purana Ma was done. The two of them stood back to back within the circle of gods. Above her, Aru heard the impatient hissing of the arrows. They were trembling, not like a leaf that's about to fall from a branch, but like some some sort of rabid beast that's legitimately trembling with excitement over tearing you apart. Too late. Aru remembered Boo's reassurance that the arrows wouldn't actually hit them until they had finished their prana pranama. They definitely finished. A sharp sound cut the air, as if someone had dropped a handful of sewing needles. An arrow landed near Aru's foot. Minnie screamed. A few more arrows pleaded the ground. 
Not all at once. No, that would be too easy. It was as if someone was tempting the gods. Either of these kids striking your fancy? Want to say one? Here, I'll give you a second to think. Aru threw up her hands, trying to see through the lace of her fingers. Move! screamed Minnie, attempting to shove Aru out of the circle of statues. Aru teetered backwards. When she looked at where she'd been standing, she saw a handful of arrows stuck in the air. Stay calm, shouted Boo. Who can stay calm when arrows are being shot at them? She screamed. A god, said Boo. But we're not gods, said Minnie. Ah, good point. Minnie hefted her ba her backpack and scooted closer to Rue. We have to hide, she hissed. But what was the point of that? The arrows would find them regardless. A Rue peered at the statues and their cold, impassive faces. Don't they care? A Rue tried to pry off one of the statue's toes to curl it back at the arrows. Not that it would do anything, but at least it would feel useful. But the stone didn't yield. More arrows landed in front of her. One was an inch from her pinky. Another whispered past her ear. Now the arrows look like a colony of bats. This is it, moaned Minnie, holding up her backpack. She pressed herself tightly against the used stone legs. A rube braced herself. The arrows, the arrow points were spinning toward her, blowing wind against her face. A rube flung out her hand, eyes pinched closed. Stop! The whistling wind went silent. A root blinked open. Her hand was still extended. For a moment, she wondered whether she had stopped the arrows herself. But then she saw what was protecting her, a net. It crackled and shimmered as if it, its mesh were made out of, out of bolts of lightning. Her feet were, weren't touching the ground anymore. She was floating, hallowed by light, at that moment, she had the most absurd desire to do two things. Sing the Circle of Life song from The Lion King. Two, throw up. Being dangled by an unseen force? Yep, no thanks. But then she looked around and realized the arrows had vanished. Also, the statues had changed, changed positions. Before, she had been leaning against the god of the winds, but now it was Indra the god of thunder who looked down at her. His face was still made of stone, but his expression had changed from indifferent to amused, as if he just realized who Aru was, his daughter. She, Aru Shah, was the daughter of Indra, the king of the heavens.